on World News Tonight. Ian's destruction. Hurricane Ian continues to wreak havoc as it moves on a trail of destruction towards the American mainland. The Russian offensive. The Russian Federation to announce the official annexation of four former Ukrainian territories after controversial referendums. Suchi jailed. Myanmar's court sentenced former Burmese leaders Aung San Suu Kyi with three years of jail time. And celebrating countrymanship. Hong Kong puts on a festive decorations for the celebration of China's National Day. This is Other There in a World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, Hurricane Ian plowed into Florida's Gulf Coast with catastrophic force unleashing howling winds, torrential rains and treacherous surge of ocean surf that made it one of the most powerful U.S. storms in recent history. With howling winds, torrential rain and a treacherous ocean surge, Hurricane Ian slammed into Florida Wednesday afternoon with Category 4 fury one of the most powerful storms on record to hit the United States. The National Hurricane Center reported Ian made landfall on Florida's west coast in Cayo Costa, south of Tampa and just west of Fort Myers, with sustained winds of up to 150 miles per hour. The storm's wind speeds put it just shy of a Category 5 designation, the most severe classification for storms, though Ian was expected to weaken a notch after coming ashore. The storm so massive, it was easily seen from the International Space Station on Wednesday. Oh. While hurricane hunters closer to the Earth could feel Ian's wrath as turbulence rocked their aircraft. In the hours before landfall, Governor Ron DeSantis told residents it was too late to leave if they hadn't already, urging them to stay indoors and off the roads. There will be debris in the air and flooding powerful enough to move cars around, uh, so please do not be outside. Uh, during this storm. If you're in those southwest Florida counties, uh, you need to be sheltering uh, in place. The National Hurricane Center said Ian was unleashing high surf that could cause coastal flooding of up to 18 feet, with thunderstorms and tornadoes also possible. Acting Director Jamie Rome. You need to get into the interior of your home and begin to brace for a period of sustained uh, damaging, uh, potentially devastating winds. Water in Tampa Bay receded ahead of the storm, pulled out to sea by the hurricane's westward winds, leaving an extraordinary scene with sea creatures exposed on the dry bay floor. President Joe Biden said Wednesday he had spoken with DeSantis and his team was in constant contact with Florida officials. I made it clear to the governor and the mayors that the federal government is ready to help in every single way possible. And I want to repeat what I said yesterday to the people of Florida. The storm is incredibly dangerous, to state the obvious. It's life-threatening. You should obey all warnings and directions from emergency officials. Don't take anything for granted. Use their judgment, not yours. The director of the National Weather Service called Ian an historic event, adding, quote, this is a storm that we will talk about for many years to come. As Storm Ian is on the go, USA is concerned about the surge in life-threatening storm surge as water is being pushed inland. And scientists are warning that storm surge will become more severe due to global warming. This is what storm surge looks like. The bathtub warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico inundating the streets of Naples, pushing some cars out of their spaces, causing waves of water to rise over the roofs. Meanwhile, here in Punta Gorda, where the winds reached more than 100 miles per hour, the streets are flooded and littered with tree limbs and debris. This parking garage has become a refuge for residents. Experts say the warming waters of the Gulf may be attributed to climate change. 40 years ago, the average temperature of the Gulf of Mexico was approximately three degrees cooler. That small increase makes a huge difference. That warm water fuels the monster storm in just 24 hours, increasing wind speed by 35 miles per hour, a phenomenon known as rapid intensification. Ian jumped from a Category 3 to a strong 4. Scientists say that will become more common as the Earth's oceans continue to warm. 
With the second longest coastline in any state, the Florida Peninsula is vulnerable to storm surges like we've seen today, especially on the Gulf Coast, where Ian is slamming the coastline. The shallow seabed here, less than 100 feet deep, makes it easy for a storm with strong winds to push an enormous amount of water into the coast. Rushing water destroys almost everything in its path. If you think about a wall of water 10, 10 foot high being pushed by 155 mile an hour winds, that's like repeated impacts by a, a large vehicle, say an SUV hitting a structure every you know, five seconds, boom, boom. Boom. The backside of the hurricane is now slamming into Punta Gorda. The damage and risk of storm surge, immense. While the disaster unfolds in Florida, power has been restored in parts of Cuba after Hurricane Ian pummeled the western end of the island and causing a total blackout. Cuba had restored power to at least some consumers Wednesday after Hurricane Ian caused the country's grid to completely collapse, turning off the lights for 11 million people. Ian knocked out power even in far eastern Cuba, which was largely unaffected by the storm. Havana caught the tail end of the hurricane as it barreled off the island and into the Gulf of Mexico toward Florida, leaving the city in a tangled mess and residents nervous about what comes next. Clarabel Centra lives in Havana. In general, power never goes out. It goes out in phases, that is to say, in some blocks, but the rest of the blocks have electricity. But this time, it was a total blackout. The power came back for a while and then went out again. Our concern is that now with the floods, we haven't been able to go out to look for food. We have to see where we can go to look for bread because that is what we can use to provide food for the children, even though we have some food in the house for these situations. Before the storm, Cuba's already frail grid, largely dependent on antiquated Soviet-era oil-fired generation plants and scarce fuel, had been faltering for months. Hours-long daily blackouts have become routine across much of the island. Provinces west of Havana took a more direct hit from Ian and were still entirely without power or communications on Wednesday. Roads into the region were littered with downed trees, gas stations closed, and many low-lying coastal areas remained flooded and impassable. Puerto Rico suffered a similar island-wide blackout after Hurricane Fiona hit there on September 18th, prompting outrage among residents. More than 300,000 customers still remained without power in Puerto Rico as of Wednesday. The war in Ukraine is entering a new phase with Russian President Vladimir Putin poised to formally announce the annexation of some 15 percent of Ukraine's territory following referendums in several Moscow-controlled regions. In response, the West says it's preparing even more sanctions against Russia. Russia was poised on Wednesday to announce the annexation of four Moscow-controlled regions of Ukraine despite international outrage. On Moscow's Red Square, a large stage has been set up with billboards proclaiming Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson, together forever. Watchers say President Vladimir Putin could proclaim the annexation in a speech within days, just over a week since referendums were held and the Russian-installed administrations of the four Ukrainian provinces formally asked Putin to incorporate them into Russia. Residents of the Kherson region voted in favor of joining Russia, and based on the results of this vote, I will definitely write to the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, so that the legal registration of the incorporation of the Kherson region into the Russian Federation can be carried out as quickly as possible. The Russia-banned referendums, however, are being denounced by the West. Washington says that it will impose economic sanctions on Russia in the coming days over what it called, quote, sham referendums. The United States will never recognize Russia's attempts to annex parts of Ukraine. Quite the opposite. We will continue to work with allies and partners to bring even more pressure on Russia and the individuals and entities that are helping support its attempted land grab. You can expect additional measures from us in the coming days. The EU also proposed a new package of sanctions against Russia on Wednesday. This includes further import bans on Russian products, as well as export bans on key technology used for the military. 
European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen proposed a new package of Russian sanctions designed to make the Kremlin pay for escalating the conflict in Ukraine with what she called sham votes in occupied territory. The European Commission has presented a proposal for a new round of sanctions against Russia that sets the legal basis for a price cap on oil imports. This eighth package is a response to Putin's threat to use nuclear weapons, as well as the pseudo-referendums that were held in the territories Russia occupies in Ukraine, which, according to the President of the European Commission, have been designed to grab Ukrainian land and change international borders by force. We do not accept the sham referendum and any kind of annexation in Ukraine, and we're determined to make the Kremlin pay for this further escalation. The price cap on oil has been coordinated with the G7 countries, but the new sanctions also put a strong emphasis on trade. Included is an export ban on Russian products designed to deprive its economy of 7 billion euros, as well as an export ban that focuses on key technologies needed for the Kremlin's war machine. New entities and people will also be included, and this time EU nationals sitting on governing bodies of Russian state-owned companies will be sanctioned. Thank you, Madam President. We will add further key operators, and among these operators, it will be people who, not necessarily Russians, but people who participate in the circumvention of sanctions. Till now, a total of 1,200 people have been sanctioned, with banks, companies and markets also hit. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. Now, Sweden's security service said that it would investigate unexplained explosions and leaks on the Nord Stream pipelines in the Baltic Sea, calling them aggravated sabotage. As the EU says that the leaks in major gas pipelines between Russia and Europe are the result of sabotage, many questions remain unanswered. According to experts, only a handful of countries have the capacity to commit such acts, and it may take weeks to investigate due to high gas pressure in the pipes. It is crucial now that Europe and NATO stand together. We have to find out what happened and who was behind it. It may take some time. However, the 27-strong union isn't waiting to step up to the plate, saying any new attack on the bloc will be met with a strong and united response. What happened it was in international waters is an attack on European um, energy infrastructure, European energy security, close to uh, our borders. Uh, and uh, that's something uh, we, we will respond to uh, in, in, in solidarity uh, in Europe. In the meantime, the Europeans want to ensure safety moving forward. Firstly, security and surveillance will be strengthened around both Norway's land and offshore oil and gas installations. New sabotage could have catastrophic effects for the EU, which with winter approaching is already struggling to cover its energy needs. Denmark will extend this vigilance across its energy sector to all at-risk infrastructures. And Sweden has since opened an investigation into what they've called the aggravated sabotage. Russia has denied any involvement, calling the accusations predictable, stupid and absurd, but also saying that wasting Russian gas would be costing them money. Moscow has instead pointed the finger at Washington for the leaks and asked for a UN Security Council meeting, which will take place this Friday. President Joe Biden pushed for Congress to permanently extend the child tax credit, raise the minimum wage and expand nutrition assistance programs to help reduce hunger rates. The conference came amid rising food inflation. At the first White House summit on hunger, nutrition and health in over 50 years, U.S. President Joe Biden declared his goal of ending U.S. hunger and reducing diet-related diseases by 2030. If a parent cannot feed a child, there's nothing else that matters to that parent. If you look at your child and you can't feed your child, what the hell else matters? To that end, Biden announced $8 billion in private sector spending to help fight hunger, saying one in 10 American households still do not have access to enough food. 
The president asked the private sector to help underwrite the program after Congress failed to further extend school lunch aid put in place during the health crisis, which helped suppress hunger rates. But hunger again climbed following the expiration of child tax credit payments in January, while soaring food prices have stretched family budgets. Focus, however, briefly strayed at Wednesday's event when the president sought to publicly acknowledge Republican Congresswoman Jackie Walorski, a co-sponsor of Wednesday's conference on hunger, who died in a car accident in August. Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Biden moved past the issue without any correction. When asked about the incident multiple times later on Wednesday, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said Biden had already planned to welcome the Congresswoman's family to the White House for a bill signing on Friday, and that's why she was, quote, top of mind. A court in military ruled Myanmar jail deports leader Aung San Suu Kyi and her former economic advisor for three years for violating an official secrets law. Myanmar's deposed leader and Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi and her economic advisor Sean Turnell were each given three-year jail terms on Thursday for allegedly violating an official secrets act. The pair apparently won't be subject to hard labor. Thursday's sentencing took place in a closed court in the capital, Naypyidaw. Suu Kyi and Turnell, an Australian national, had pleaded not guilty to breaching the Colonial Era Act. In military-controlled Myanmar, it's an offence punishable by up to 14 years in prison. The defendant's exact offence under the Official Secrets Act remains unclear, though a source previously said Turnell's offence relates to an allegation that he had government documents. Myanmar saw large protests after the junta overthrew Suu Kyi's democratically elected government in a coup last year. A veteran opponent of military rule, she faces more than 17 years in jail in separate cases mostly linked to graft. A junta spokesperson did not answer calls for a comment on Thursday. Though the junta insists courts in Myanmar are independent and those arrested are receiving due process. Now, both global currencies have depreciated significantly against the U.S. dollar in recent weeks, and that even included China's yuan, which is now at a 14-year low against the greenback. This and other factors that some market watchers in China concerns that bumpy times are on the horizon for the world's second biggest economy. The Chinese yuan on Wednesday fell to a 14-year low against the U.S. dollar, despite efforts by China's central bank to stem the slide after U.S. interest rate hikes prompted traders to convert money into dollars in search of higher returns. The yuan fell to 7.23 against the dollar, its lowest level since January 2008. While a weaker yuan helps Chinese exporters by making their goods cheaper abroad, it also encourages capital to flow out of the economy. This would then raise costs for Chinese borrowers and set back the ruling Communist Party's efforts to boost weak economic growth. In fact, the World Bank earlier this week lowered the 2022 GDP growth outlook for China. In its biannual report released on Tuesday, the annual growth outlook for East Asia and the Pacific region had been downgraded from 5 percent to 3.2 percent, with much of the decline due to China. The World Bank estimates GDP growth for the world's second biggest economy to grow just 2.8 percent, while the rest of the 23-country region was expected to grow 5.3 on average. The yen, much like other currencies, is expected to decline even further, with some predicting it to fall to 7 yen for one dollar. This as U.S. Fed commented that more rate hikes can be expected in order to cool inflation which has already reached a four-decade high. China's Deputy Central Bank Governor Liu Guocheng held a video meeting with Chinese bankers on Wednesday, calling on them to maintain the basic stability of the exchange rate, while warning bankers against betting on the yuan rising or falling. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Glaciers in Switzerland melted at the worst rate ever recorded in 2022. A total of 6% of remaining glaciers in the country were lost, which is equal to roughly 3 cubic kilometers of ice. 
US rapper Coolio, known for iconic hit Gangster's Paradise, has died at the age of 59. His longtime manager said that the artist was found unresponsive on the bathroom floor for a friend's house in Los Angeles. Taiwan will end its mandatory COVID-19 quarantine for arrivals and welcome tourists back. The government said completing a major step in its plans to reopen the outside world. The results of a key Alzheimer's drug trial have reignited decades-old hopes that targeting a particular protein helps arrest the progression of the fatal brain disease. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we leave you tonight with Hong Kong displaying blessing slogans for the celebration of China's National Day. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and have a good night.